Okay, good afternoon, everyone. We are here. We are ready to go. Thank you for joining us on today's edition of New Hope Radio. Coming your way over 1590 on the AM dial, WARV. Also, Click Facebook and uh, WARV.net. Three ways you can pick up the program. We hope that you've, well, obviously, if I'm talking to you, you've chosen one. Get a friend to listen. Tell them they can get 30 minutes of good Bible teaching. It'll really help them out in their own personal life. Aaron is here to meet you and greet you on Facebook. Join the chat. Let us know where you're watching from. And that we'd like to see how far and wide our reach will go here on New Hope Radio. <coughs> We're going to wrap up our series today on looking up. Look up. We notice that when we look up at the cross... We find forgiveness. When we look up at the cross, we have great reasons to be thankful. Today we're going to see that when we look up at the cross, we need to check our heart. And we need to prepare our hearts. So we're going to talk about checking and preparing today here on New Hope Radio. Now, we I think we can all agree preparation is a very big part of life, right? If you've chosen a career, you know you have to prepare and you have to get an education in that career. If you're going for surgery, you know there's got to be preparation. They got to do all kinds of pre-op testing and make sure that you're okay and you can handle the surgery, things like that. You have any allergies, right? If you're going on vacation, you have to do some planning. If you're going to travel, you got to Figure out what are you going to wear, you got to get airfare, you got to get reservations, things like that. you got to find routes if you're driving. If you're going to retire, retirement requires preparation. You, want, you always want to start when you're young, which most people don't do, and start preparing for retirement when you're older. So there are so many aspects of life where we have to check where we are and then prepare for where we're going. And, and, you know, the more important something is, the more checking and preparing is required. Now, John the Baptist, which I'm sure you're familiar with him, he understood the importance of preparing because that was his mission. His mission and his message was to get people to check their hearts and to prepare their hearts for the coming of the Lord. We're going to pick it up in John chapter 1, in verse 19. This is, the, the, by the way, the John, the apostle that wrote this, is not the John the Baptist who it's about. Okay, these are two different Johns. Okay, so John the apostle wrote, This is the testimony of John the Baptist. When the Jews sent to him priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask, who are you? You know, John was causing quite a stir. He had a lot of people following after him. He was baptizing. Uh, he had a strong message, and people liked it. They liked the strong message. And that uh, he confessed, and he did not deny, but he confessed. He said, well, I'm not the Christ. If you think I'm the Christ, I'm not. So get that out of your head right now. Okay? So they asked him, they said, then what are you then? Oh, are you Elijah? He said, no, man, I'm not Elijah. Are you the great prophet we're waiting for? No, I'm not the prophet either. But you see, the basis of the question was biblical. They understood the Old Testament. In Deuteronomy chapter 18, where it tells us, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your countrymen, and you shall listen to him. So John the Baptist, he was a unique kind of a guy. He didn't go with the flow. He didn't go looking for people. People went looking for him. He lived a very simple life. He ate bugs and honey. He wore camel hair and a leather belt like prophets did. He wasn't into the city. He wasn't into the world. He was like his own man. Okay? And it seems as if too often that people are looking for the right thing, but in the wrong way. They were looking for the right thing, the Christ. But they were going the wrong way because John 
Well, he wasn't the Christ. You know what's really funny, I think? If John said that he was one of those men, they'd probably receive him. But when Jesus came, he said he was, <laughs> and they rejected him. Isn't that something? If John said, yeah, I'm the Christ, they would have said, great, man, we've been waiting for you. Jesus comes in, he says, I'm the Christ, and they said, no, you're not. And they rejected him. Isn't that something? It goes to show you, here it comes, the spiritual warfare that's going on in this world. The attacks are always against Jesus Christ. You know what's interesting? No other religion is attacked like Christianity. No other people are attacked like Christians because we are connected to Christ. We're related to Christ. So what Satan does to Jesus, he tries to do to, do to us as well. So they said to them, then who, who are you that we may give an answer to those who sent us? What do you say about yourself? Now John's going to tell them who he is. He is the preparer. John denied the honor of being the Christ belonged to him. He said, listen, I'm just a voice. I'm a voice of one crying in the wilderness. That's all. I'm a messenger. That's all I am. And here's my message. Make straight the way of the Lord. As Isaiah the prophet said, make straight the way of the Lord. What's he saying? Check your heart. Prepare your heart. Jesus is coming. See, John, you could say, is the herald of the king. Before the king comes into town, the herald prepares the people. He blows his trumpet. Do, do, do. The king is coming. And everybody has to get ready and pay their reverence to the king. There's an old song that says, I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about a somebody who can save anybody. It's a nice gospel song. Nice black gospel song. I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about a somebody who can save anybody. You can say that was John's song. He was a herald of the king. The contemporary English version says, I'm only someone shouting in the desert. Get the road ready for the Lord. Get the road ready. That's what he's saying. Check the roads. Get them ready. You know, when John said that, the people understood what he was saying. They knew what that meant. Here he is speaking language that the Department of Public Works would know. But they knew what it meant. Because naturally speaking, this was road work. Prepare the way for the king. Let's say a very important dignitary was coming to town. Maybe he was an ambassador, maybe he was a prince, maybe he was a king. And, and so they would put out the word, and they would send out the DPW, Department of Public Works, and they would clear the roads. They would fill the potholes, remove all the debris, all the rocks, all the sticks, because they wanted his entrance into the town to be smooth. Maybe he was in a, a wagon pulled by horses. And they didn't want any bumps, and they didn't want any potholes, so they went out and they prepared the way because the important dignitary was coming. So here's John's message. Prepare your heart. Check your heart. What's going on there? Prepare your heart. Because somebody really important is coming. Now, here we are 2,000 years later. What does that mean to us? Well, the Bible holds the answer in Mark chapter 1, in verse 4. I'm going to begin in verse 2. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. So again, check your heart. He's the voice of one crying in the wilderness. That was John. Make ready the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. So John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. What was he doing? Getting people to check their hearts, turn their hearts around, because the king was coming. you got to prepare your heart. We're going to see today how to prepare your heart. 
We're not preparing or we're not clearing a path for Jesus to ride into town on. No. You know what we're doing? We're clearing a path for Jesus to come into our hearts. And that's why repentance. John preached repentance. And today repentance is just as real. Repentance means a reversal, a reformation. It means a turning. I'm going to turn a different direction. This repentance is important in two ways. Number one, to turn from a certain way of thinking about salvation. You know, people have their own idea of salvation. Good works. Oh, if I'm just good enough, I know I'll be saved. you got to turn from that, because it ain't true. Oh, religion. Oh, if I can just be religious. I know, if I just go to church, I'll be saved. Not true. I know, if I'm just a moral person, I'll just be good and nice and wholesome, I'll get to heaven. Not true. All of those attitudes have to be repented of. We have to turn from them. You know why? Because they're not true. They're not. No one can be good enough. Religion is a work that doesn't save. And morality still stems from a depraved nature. But how then can someone be saved? How do I, what do I turn toward? Good question. Acts 2.21 says, It shall be that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. There it is. Call on the name of the Lord and you'll be saved. Call out to Him. Believe in Him. Trust in Him. That's the basis of salvation. And it goes for everybody. Everybody and anybody. I want to look at repentance in another light as well. We're coming into the season, but it's almost, pretty soon it's going to be Easter. The Lenten season begins in a few weeks, and then we're working our way toward Easter. And it's a wonderful time of year. It's a great time of year. Because you know what the Lenten season's about? It's about soul searching. It's about checking your heart. Have you drifted from God? Are you even with God? It's a real spiritual time. Just to see where we are in our personal relationship with our Creator. So, you're going to check your heart and you're going to see where you are, and then there might be need for repentance to turn and go in a direction that will bring you closer to God. Don't waste the Lenten season. Don't waste it. Okay? It's a season of preparation. And don't, you know, we know that Lent has a lot of um, popularity in the Roman Catholic Church. But don't think it has no significance. It has significance in the Protestant Church as well. Because it's a season of soul searching. A season of heart checking. It's like a spiritual checkup. Maybe it's like time to do some spring cleaning in the soul. We're going to see some things today that need to be cleaned out if they're there. Okay? So I'm going to go to the book of Galatians, and we're going to take a look at some things that need to be cleaned out. Some behaviors that maybe need to be turned from in order to prepare your heart for Christ and for Easter. Okay? So, the Bible tells us in chapter 5 of the book of Galatians, in verse 19, it talks about the deeds of the flesh. When you, when you hear the word, the flesh, it speaks of our sin nature, our sinful nature, the, the depraved side of us. Okay? And it says, well, here they are. Immorality. Impurity. Uh, sensuality, which is like excessive indulgence, contempt for restraints, okay? Do you have any contempt for restraints? Like, are you the kind of person, you're going to do what you want, when you want, as much as you want? You've got no restraints on you? That's sensuality. Idolatry, which is image worship. Idolatry could be your car. 
Idolatry could be your job, your hobby. It could be your person. Sorcery. You know, the Greek word for sorcery is the word pharmakeia. It's where we get the word pharmacy. And sometimes it speaks of medicine, but it also speaks of witchcraft. So we got a lot of nice people involved in witchcraft. It's no good. The deeds of the flesh are strife. Someone that's always quarreling. You know anybody like that? Always quarreling. Very contentious. Got to turn from that. Jealousy. Jealousy means to be fervent for the wrong thing. Outburst of anger. It literally means breathing hard. <laughs> you know, I saw a woman one time, she was so angry. She was like, I thought she was going to explode. I thought her heart was going to jump right through her mouth. <laughs> she was doing that. I said, oh, man, call 911. It means to be fierce. Deeds of the flesh are disputes, which means like disunity or causing division among people. Factions, where people are like in cliques, okay? And then there's envying and, and drunkenness and carousing. And Paul says, and a whole bunch of other stuff like that. So, in other words, the deeds of the flesh are very, very evident, and they really make it all about you. It's all about the individual, okay? And the interesting thing is that many of these deeds are found in the home and in the church. We're not talking about wicked, evil, rotten, bad people. We're talking about these could be nice people, good people. They could be Christian people that are still living in these deeds of the flesh. So, if you want to have a good Easter, there's got to be a heart check. You've got to check the heart. And you've got to prepare it. Because Easter is a wonderful time of celebrating the risen Christ. And uh, you know what? It's a great time to like have a fresh start in your spiritual life. A fresh start. You know, like on the, on the calendar... New Year's, January 1st, for many people, it's a fresh start in some habits and practices that they want to take on. But spiritually, Easter is a great time to have a fresh start. It's the resurrection of Christ. It's new life. It's new power. When Jesus rose from the grave, he gave the, the disciples the great commission, go out into all the world and make disciples, tell people about me and what I've done, and, and, and teach them how to live the right way. I mean, man, Easter is a great time of year. A prepared heart will get the most out of the Easter season. So if any of these areas strike a chord with you, all you need to do is turn. That's repentant. repentance. Turn from those things. What does repentance look like? It looks like a life that's under the control of the Holy Spirit. Now God is directing your steps. Now when God directs your steps, there's a positive side. Here's the, here's the outcome of repentance. Okay? It's the next verse, verse 22. Paul calls it, and many of you know it as, the fruit of the Spirit. See, the Spirit produces fruit. The flesh produces works. Oh, you say, what's the difference? Fruit is refreshing. Works demands payment. And let me tell you something. The payment for the works of the flesh, it ain't pretty. It ain't pretty. You will reap what you sow. It's not going to be a good payment. You're working hard to earn some things that are going to go against you. That's the works of the flesh. Ah, but the fruit of the Spirit. You listen to what makes up the fruit of the Spirit, and you tell me if these things are not better than jealousy and strife and carousing and sorcery and enmities and disputes and factions and all that stuff. Joy. Joy means delight, or to be delightful, cheerfulness, joy in the Lord. There are some people that I know, it's like, man, they're always joyful. They're like, huh, oh, they're so nice to be around. 
because they're always joyful. It's nice to be around joyful people, right? Who wants to be around complainers? But joyful people, they're like magnetic. You like to be around them. So ask yourself, am I a delight to be around or am I a killjoy? Which one are you? Or maybe you're both. I think I'm both. <laughs> sometimes I can be delightful and sometimes I can be a killjoy. So I know I've got some repentance to do this Lenten season. That's okay. So the next aspect of the fruit of the Spirit is peace or peacefulness. That's a good one. It means quietness or to be set at one. See, when you're at peace, it means, I think, it means like you have a good understanding of what's going on around you. You can be at peace in a storm. Kindness is part of the fruit of the Spirit. It means to have a gentle demeanor, to have excellence. Kindness is nice, because you know what kindness does? It kind of, it puts you in touch with other people. It puts you in touch with people that might need a helping hand or a lift up off the ground. Goodness. Goodness means to be kindly or generous. The word is agathos and it means goodness on the inside. There's another word, kalos, which means a goodness that you can see, like a banana split with extra whipped cream. That's goodness you can see. But this talks about a good-natured person. It's on the inside, but it does work its way outwardly. Okay? The Bible says in Proverbs 12, an excellent wife is the crown of her husband. What does that mean? It means that as an excellent wife, she has goodness, and her husband feels like a king. Faithfulness is another aspect of the fruit of the Spirit. And it means moral conviction. When you're faithful to God, oh boy, here it comes. You're going to stand on what you believe. You're not going to compromise because of who's around you or who's with you. Or you're not going to compromise because of where you are. No, you're going to stand on your convictions, no matter what. That's faithfulness. Gentleness means meekness. It also means you're not going to take something by force that you can wait. God will give it to you. And here's one, self-control. Self-control means temperance. And Paul said, against such things there is no law. It means that you're not going to get arrested and go to jail when you live in joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, self-control, love. You're not going to be arrested. You might be arrested for doing the works of the flesh, but you won't be arrested for these things. As a matter of fact, if you're not living in the fruit of the Spirit, man, you're already in jail. You're already there. You're already in bondage. Because these things are freeing. See, the Holy Spirit, He makes us free. You want to be free? then yield your life to the Holy Spirit. He will make you free. And when you're free, oh man, I'll tell you what, when you're free, life's worth living. Yeah, you want to live. You like living. You love living. Because you're free. But if you're not free, life stinks. And there are people, they're in bondage to the works of the flesh and they can't get out. And I'll tell you what, their life stinks. But you turn from that stuff, and you let the Holy Spirit produce this fruit inside of you, and life is going to smell so sweet. Oh yeah, man, like a fresh-cut watermelon. Ever smell a fresh-cut watermelon? Or a fresh-cut orange? Fruit, my mouth's already watering. You know, nothing like fresh fruit. You can smell it. And it's so refreshing. And what does it do? It, it, it revives you. Right, you can be a little tired on a hot summer day, and you have a couple of nice pieces. I say a couple because I can't have one. I have to have two pieces of nice cold watermelon, and I feel revived. 
I feel like, oh yeah, man, that's good. I come alive. And as a fruitful Christian, you can be that for other people as well as be that for yourself. Come alive. You don't go through life and be a bag of dried up prunes. Be fresh fruit for everybody else. So, let's look up at the cross. Check your heart. Prepare the way for the Lord this Easter. It's right around the corner. It's like coming. I can't believe it. Like Ash Wednesday is coming up and like, is it next week or the week after? It's, it's like soon. I think it's next week. It's like, man, it's, it's here. It's coming. It's going to be on Valentine's Day, I think. Ash Wednesday and Valentine's Day. Kind of share on the spotlight this year. Okay? So, have a great Easter by preparing your heart. Like we said in the beginning, the more important something is, the more preparation is required for that thing. And this is the most important thing. So prepare. We're going to have a great plan here at New Hope. We always do. It's called the Daniel Plan. And what we do is have a program of healthy eating and good spiritual exercises so our body, our soul, and our mind can all be in the best shape possible. We want to be healthy in our whole being. So we'll be talking about that coming up pretty soon. And you in Radio Land, you can be part of it too. You don't have to come to New Hope to be part of our spiritual journey. Okay? That's it for today. Listen, join us Sunday uh, at 9 and 11 a.m. right here on Facebook or YouTube as we stream our services live. We've got a great message coming, coming up out of the book of Revelation. Watch out for spiritual deadness. That's what it's called. Watch out for spiritual deadness. Okay? Hey, we'll be on the radio tomorrow at 3 o'clock right here on 1590 WARV as well. You have a great day. We'll see you next week.